Hey guys, Corroth Camel ADV. We're gonna do the install video tonight for the uh, gut guard skid plate on the Harley Pan America. Uh, like a lot of, uh, well, basically every new adventure bike, uh, the skid plate from the factory is junk. Um, they're, they're super thin aluminum. They're more of a splash guard than anything. Um, they're not made for any actual off-road use. They put the super light duty skid plates on it so they can say it has a skid plate. Uh, but it doesn't really affect the weight or the price of the bike very much. So if you're going to do any off-road riding, you do definitely want to upgrade it. Uh, the Pan America um, has a stressed member uh, design with the motor. So what that means is the motor is an actual part of the frame. So we don't have frame rails that come down and underneath the motor like we have on past bikes. So this is kind of the way everything is going now. So on a bike that's designed like this, it doesn't have the lower frame rails. We're mounting the skid plate directly to the motor, which is the same way that Harley's doing it, even with their upgraded um, aftermarket plate. When we design that skid plate though, we need to be very careful to make sure the brackets um, absorb some impact. So it's not transmitting all that force directly into the engine case. If you crack the engine case, if you take a big hit on the trail with a rock or whatever, and you transfer that into the engine case, and it's not dissipated properly. You can crack the engine case. If that happens, it's a very expensive and very lengthy repair. So it is very important uh, that you put a, a good skid plate on the bike and be one that's going to um, allow for, for proper uh, distribution of those forces. So we've got our fasteners here. Um, there's six bolts and four spacers. Real simple install. We need a T40 Torx bit and a five mil Allen. Um, so this is what's going to come in your kit, the fasteners, the spacers, the intermediary plate, the skid plate, and there will be a paperwork pack with decals in it. It's very important to read the paperwork that comes in the kit. Um, if there are any changes to the bike, say from, from the 2021 model to 22, we're probably not going to do an all new um, install video. So if there's any minor changes, it will be uh, communicated in the paperwork with your kit. So make sure that you read that. So we've got six Torx fasteners that hold the factory skid plate on. We've got one here, two here, two here. So we're gonna pop those off real quick. And set those aside, we are going to reuse them. And this is the T40 Torx bit that we're using. And we can set this factory skid plate aside. We're not gonna reuse any of the parts from it other than uh, the bolts. On the intermediary plate here, the uh, bump outs here and here are going up to the motor. So the embedded nuts are going to be facing up. And on these four locations that go into the motor, there's a quarter inch spacer that goes on each one. So we're gonna put a little dab of blue Loctite on each of the uh, bolts that go up into the motor. And you wanna use the blue uh, medium duty stuff. There's no need for the red high strength here. And you want to work relatively quickly uh, because we're not going to tighten these bolts up immediately when we do this. We're going to leave them a little bit loose to get the skid plate on and um, adjusted. We're going to get one started and then we'll set the rest of the spacers in. So we're gonna tighten these. We're just gonna leave them um, a little loose, kind of uh, whatever tight is, minus half a turn, basically. Just, so we've got a little bit of wiggle in here when we go to put the skid plate itself on. Like so. So now this is on, but the plate's got some wiggle in it. So now I've got the skid plate itself. 
I'm going to take the last two factory bolts and put a dab of blue Loctite on them. And this is the upper factory skid plate mounting bolt, so we're reusing that. So we're just going to get this one started and then go around to the other side and do the same. And with the skid plate basically held in place here with the upper bolts, we can install the countersunk bolts in the bottom of the plate. They're all going to get a dab of blue Loctite as well. I'm going to take our 5 mil Allen bit here. And it doesn't really matter which one you start with. And just start these countersunk bolts. You can just leave them a little bit loose as well until we have all six in. With all six of the countersunk bolts started, we can tighten them up. And then with those done, we can tighten the um, intermediary plate bolts. Um, the holes through the skid plate are just big enough for the socket bit to go into them, and that's done intentionally. So if you go to take the skid plate off and you take it off, with the mounting bracket, then you've got to mess with uh, the spacers on top of the bracket and you simply can't get in to hold them. So to uh, limit the amount of frustration, we're leaving the mounting bracket on the motor and we're removing the skid plate using the six countersunk bolts. So again, this is just the T40. And I'm just gonna torque these guys up. And then we can come up to the front ones here, tighten these up. That wraps up the install video for the Camel ADV gut guard for the Harley-Davidson Pan America. If you have any questions, as always, info at camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>so we've got our skid plate here this is uh four and three quarter millimeter aluminum fully tig welded uh, by hand here in our shop and we have a mounting bracket that goes between the motor it's an interme intermediary plate so it go goes between the skid plate and the motor motor bolt holes are here and then the skid plate mounts to the embedded nuts here so what this does when we take a big hit on the skid plate, we have some room here where this is able to distort if it needs to. So we're not putting all of that load into the, uh, the engine casing. So we've added a bunch of ventilation so the charging system regulator uh, gets enough airflow. Of course, that also means that uh, dirt and water are gonna make their way in. So we have added drainage holes on the bottom here. So when that's Mud makes its way in here. It's able to drain out on the bottom. We've got good protection here and ventilation as well for the exhaust heat. So on the left-hand side of the bike, you can see we've left uh, access for the oil filter. So if you have an oil filter socket, you're gonna be able to get the filter off. Um, the skid plate has got a cutaway here to clear the side stand. So um, the oil from the filter if you've got the front of the bike up a little bit higher than the back, um, you're gonna get the oil from uh, the filter when you take it off uh, to be draining right here. We have put a cutout on the back here for the oil drain plug. So you're able to do an oil change on this bike without taking the skid plate off. And you can see the, um, the embedded nuts here and the mounting plate and how everything interacts with the motor. So you can see the skid plate comes down and gives you good protection for the pivot for the side stand. So again, because this is a stressed member bike, there is no frame rail, so the 
uh, side stand is mounted to the motor, uh, the engine case as well, just like the skid plate. So you need to be careful. You need some protection um, for the pivot here. If you're coming along and you don't have a skid plate that's a little bit lower than that, if you smack that, there's a very good chance you're gonna crack the engine case. Just something to be aware of.